I'm Ethan Bausch, Chief of Oncology at the University of North Carolina and an Associate Editor for Oncology at JAMA. In its August 23, 2022 issue, JAMA published a paper that addresses a salient question in contemporary cancer care, namely whether chemotherapy with cisplatin is necessary concurrently with radiation in the treatment of low-risk nasopharyngeal cancer defined as stage 2 or T3N0M0 disease without adverse features. Currently, most patients with stage 2 or T3 nasopharyngeal cancer receive concurrent chemotherapy with radiation. This approach was developed prior to the advent of intensity modulated radiation, or IMRT, which has now become standard of care. Concurrent chemotherapy carries multiple immediate and late toxicities that can be severe or life-threatening. The ability to reduce treatment intensity by omitting chemotherapy is desirable if possible without sacrificing benefits on tumor control. This was an open-label randomized non-inferiority trial conducted at five centers in China. 341 participants with stage 2 or T3 nasopharyngeal cancer were assigned randomly to either concurrent chemoradiotherapy or radiation alone. The primary endpoint was failure-free survival at three years with a pre-specified non-inferiority margin of 10%. The authors found that indeed, radiation alone was non-inferior to chemoradiation. Toxicities were significantly lower and quality of life was significantly better in the group receiving radiation alone without chemotherapy. Is this result practice changing? In my opinion, the answer is yes. Although some clinical practice guidelines currently provide an option either to include or omit concurrent chemotherapy for patients with stage 2 disease, many patients still do receive chemotherapy. This study will tip the balance away from adding chemotherapy in this population. For patients with T3N0M0 disease, the answer is less clear. Only a quarter of the patients in this trial had T3 disease, raising concern about whether there was sufficient representation of this subgroup in this non-inferiority study. This study was conducted in China, where this cancer type is endemic and almost universally associated with Epstein-Barr virus infection. This raises the question of whether it's generalizable to regions where disease is less endemic, such as Europe or North America. Again, in my opinion, I believe the answer is yes, as most cases of this cancer even in non-endemic regions, are associated with viral infections with Epstein-Barr virus or human papillomavirus, which might be expected to respond similarly to treatment. However, future investigations may further evaluate this question. A third question relates to the sufficiency of the 10% non-inferiority margin selected a priori for this trial in a disease context where there is a positive outcome rate above 90%. The authors selected this margin based on precedent in this disease context, and ultimately in this study, the point estimates were less than 2%, with a confidence interval bound about 7%, which is compelling in this case. This is a well-conducted, randomized clinical trial, finding radiation alone to be non-inferior to concurrent chemoradiotherapy for patients with low-risk nasopharyngeal carcinoma.